All right, hello everyone. My name is Glenn, aka Whale Smash from Reddit, Airsoft, Sniper Forum, Instagram. Um, and today we're going to be going over the conversion kit for the SEMA AK-104. This is my ODS-14M conversion that is available for download in the links below. So for this video, what I'll be doing is a very quick function demo. I'll be running over the bill of materials. I'll go over just a very few amount of assembly tips and then that'll be it. Uh, there's a shooting demo in another video. If you want to see that, feel free to look for it on my channel. So we'll get right into the function demo for this. Um, this functions pretty much exactly like any other AK. The mag release is still here. This is a bullpup style rifle, so the magazine is behind your handguard. Um, release the magazine, you just actuate the lever like a normal AK. And to reinsert it, normal AK install. Um, battery goes in the top compartment, just like any other AK. Uh, to gain access to it, you will rotate this butt pad cover like so, and you will depress the dust cover release, revealing your FCU and your gearbox. We'll just plug in a battery right here. Close this back up. Now as to why there's a part of a gift card here, that's to help me with some gearbox alignment. I had some problems with it, so. Closed, close the back plate. Now, the trigger throw on this uh, replica uses a very small micro switch and it has very short throw. And because of that, uh, I could not design a mechanical safety for the gun. It has an electronic safety. So, those are two electronic safety, or there's one electronic safety right here, and then the switch in front of that is the safe and full, or the semi and full auto selector. So, in the upwards position, the, sw the gun is in safe. If I pull the trigger, nothing happens. If I switch this uh, safety to the fire position, the so you can hear the solenoids click. And then if I switch the forward selector down into the bottom position, you get full auto. And in the upwards position, it's semi-automatic. If you have it in full auto and you switch the safety on, it still works. Okay, so uh, bill of materials. There is not too much that you actually need. You need a bunch of screws and then probably the big kicker here is that you're going to need your own soldering iron because you have to rewire this and then you will need three series of micro switches. So those micro switches are you can find them on Amazon, and the one for the trigger is actually a Honeywell switch. It might be, it's a little bit expensive, but it's what I had on hand. So the Honeywell switch actually looks like this. It's this really small micro switch, and it has like this little tiny button on the bottom. I'll have a link to it in the bottom, in the description below. If you want the same uh, flip switches, toggle switches that I have, uh, you can find those on Amazon. They look like this. It's pretty cheap. It's like $10 for a bag of, I don't know how many that is, like 10 or 20. But this is what it looks like. Uh, you do have to be a little bit careful with soldering these because they do melt and they do break pretty easily. <clears throat> Aside from that, you do need a number of screws. Uh, these in the back here, which run the length of the gearbox and help you secure the gearbox into the body of the gun. These are 35 millimeter M3 screws. Uh, there's a set of, this is a 10 millimeter M, uh, let's see if you can see this. So there's one 10 millimeter M3 screw up here. There's two 15 millimeter M3 screws in the front right up here. There's another 15 millimeter, this is, this is either a 15 or a 20, I don't remember, but the 15 millimeter or 20 millimeter M3 screw runs through here for the trigger. And then you have two, 
I'm gonna say these are five millimeter M3 screws to help secure this uh, carry handle slash optic mount area. And then there's one more 10 millimeter M3 screw at the front up here. Okay, so I'll do some very quick disassembly to show you uh, how this wiring kind of goes. So let's just get into that right now. So magazine out of the gun. Um, step one, take off the suppressor. Now most of you will have the original SEMA muzzle device on here. And if you want to take that off, there's actually a couple things that you need to do because they secure it through three means. There is number one, a pin, which is located right here. You can see that I've kind of chopped and filed mine. Uh, most, most of the time people just hammer that in and it goes back into this uh, front sight of, a, uh, of the gun itself. But I just cut mine because I didn't care. And then after that, you will have, on the actual um, muzzle brake itself, there will be a set screw. So you'll have to drill and then unscrew that. And then there will be a lot of glue. So you'll have to put heat gun and then, or hair dryer, boiling water, whatever you choose. And then you'll have to unscrew it the normal way. Make sure you take out that set screw. As you can see, my threads are kind of messed up. I had to take a die to this in order to re-thread it a little bit in order to get it to work again. I didn't know that there was a set screw there. So, well, now that the suppressor's off, this is what it looks like without any muzzle device. It's actually really short. So this has a 363, you can run a 363 millimeter inner barrel. I have an aftermarket Prometheus, um, and that'll run to the muzzle of the gun if you don't want to run a suppressor, but I always run a suppressor because I like my guns to be quiet. So, um, let's get into the handle. So the handle actually reuses your pre-existing motor cage and the two screws that usually mount it into your gearbox. So you will reuse this bottom screw, you'll reuse your handle of course, so we'll just take this out and set it aside. And as you can see, what is here is actually your stock motor cage, as well as the two, if I flip this over, the two screws right here, which already exist and usually mount your motor cage to your gearbox. You will reuse those, so make sure you don't lose them. Uh, aside from that, you can actually see some of our trigger components here. There's a little bit of spacing issue right here, if you can see that. That's because I... So in the version that I'll upload to Thingiverse, it'll have this issue fixed. Right now, this uh, sort of trigger guard thing is it's still a revision one, so I don't really... I don't really care to fix it for this one. I'll probably break it before that happens. Um, so, to install this trigger guard, uh, You'll need to have your trigger unscrewed from the gun itself. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pull out this screw right here. So that's the trigger screw out. Set that right there. And now my trigger is all up loose and terrible in here, but that is necessary for the disassembly because what will happen is you can twist the trigger upwards and there will be a screw which secures the back of this um, trigger guard into the main body. So the way you get to that is there is a small screw, it's very hard for you guys to see, but there's a small hole right here. You can thread an Allen key all the way down into this area right here. So I'll show you that right now. I'm gonna run this Allen key through this front hole. Kind of just get the trigger out of the way. And there we go. Hopefully that is clear to you. Doesn't help that the gun's black, but we're just gonna unscrew this.
Okay, that's enough. And then, oh, I need to take off this front sight first. So um, there is a little pin in this front sight post right here. And you just need to punch that out. Okay, I went the wrong way. So. So don't make the same mistake that I did. Uh, there's a threaded side and then a non-threaded side. I was trying to hammer it in from this side. <coughs> so now that that is loose, the front sight post right here will come right out after we remove this O-ring. So this O-ring doesn't actually come with the gun. Uh, I put it there to space out my suppressor from the uh, front sight post. Okay, so that is the front sight post off. Now I'm going to remove the screw that's in the top of this uh, sight mount. It's a, I used a 10 millimeter M3 screw in here. You can use a shorter one if you like, but I think 10 millimeters is probably the best option. All right, so now that's loose enough, the sight can kind of tilt up now, because it's just still secured in the back by these two screws back here, but this should allow us to slide this entire front bracket forwards. Be a little bit tight. All right, there we go. So that's the front portion of the handguard off. And uh, of course this uh, top portion where your gas tube would go just fell out because there's nothing supporting it anymore. Now for the handguard, all you have to do is remove, there's like a little lever in here and it just flips upwards and you can pull it out. Again, this O-ring doesn't come with it. I just used it for spacing purposes. With that out, this entire piece will slide right out and my lower just dropped out. So this is how the internals look like. You can see the micro switches up in the front right here. And then on the back we have the two switches for the safety and the semi and full auto selector. And for the rest of the wires, everything just comes up through the top of the dust cover and then feeds down through the bottom. All right, so I think that's gonna be it for this video. Oh, I'll have a circuit breakdown for how you can, um, how you can wire up this because mine is hardwired to these switches. There's two ways that you can do it. You can use the original, or you can, if you have an AK style trigger board, you can keep the trigger components and that will allow you the, well, the selector components, and that will allow you to use the safety from this. This will be your full auto and 
semi-auto selector. The safety, however, will still not work. So if you're going to go that route, just make sure that you don't uh, plug in your air or you can wire it up in the additional safety like I did. I'll have a more detailed description of that in the circuit portion. Maybe I'll link it in this video. Uh, I think that's going to be it for now. So thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. Links for all of the materials as well as the files to make this yourself will be in the description.